Uh, my name is Adrian Pop, and I made the Walrus Whisper. Nailed it. Great. Um, so, uh, first of all, what compelled you to make this film? Yeah, so um, I didn't know too much about the story initially, and it was actually um, a friend of mine and the cinematographer on the film, Justin Diazmo. He lives in Niagara Falls, and his aunt was actually the girlfriend of the main subject of the film. So we got into contact with him through that, but we didn't know too much about his story. And once we started talking to him, uh, we sat down with him and he showed us all this footage he had from working there. Um, I knew there were problems with Marineland. I knew that there were issues with the w animal welfare there, but I never knew the extent of the problems. And it's, you know, it's not really until you sit down uh, with someone who has that perspective that you really get to understand what's going on. And um, I knew instantly we wanted to make a film about this, and it was... You know, such a great story to tell. So. so had you heard about Smooshy and the, um, the main guy, I forget his name. Phil. Phil. Had you heard yeah. about Smooshy and Phil from the news before, or was this um, the first that you had heard of them in their relationship? Yeah, no, I actually had heard about Phil and Smooshy um, because a few years back, I believe it was... Um, around 2008 or so. Well, no, 2008, the walrus came, but um, then when their, their bond sort of, sort of materialized, it blew up. It was like an international sensation. Like, um, you know, Jimmy Fallon was talking about it. It was all over the news. Everyone wanted, you know, this little fluff story about a man who becomes the mother of a, of a walrus, right? Um, and I heard about it, and I was like, <laughs> that's amazing, you know? When, when do you get to see a guy befriend a walrus to the point where he can just walk around a park with her, you know, and just put her in the back of his truck and drive around. And, uh, you know, it's, it's such a human bond. And I think he's one of the few people in the world that has that. Um, so I had heard about it, but it kind of fell to the back of my mind for a few years. And then I went to film school and this happened and all the dots just fell into place. What message do you want the audience who watches the film to take away from this piece? Um, well, the biggest thing I find is, like, there's a certain denial about going to parks like Marineland or, or aquariums or thing, things where they keep these um, mammals in captivity. And when you're a child, you have, um, you have this sort of response where you're thinking about the animals and why they're in cages, but you never think about it too much because you always have your parents there saying it's okay they're being taken care of everything's fine but I what I want people to take away is just that um, what he has the bond that he has with this animal is in fact a very human bond and we're actually as humans much more connected to our environment than we'd like to admit we like to kind of put ourselves aside from everything we you know we don't we don't talk about how reliant we are on the planet on the trees on the animals and how much we interact with them but when we start to think of our world as something separate from ourselves, that's when we start to like break down the the bonds of like who we really are, and that's how we start to really lose touch with ourselves. And um, and I think Phil has experienced that through like the the issues that he's had, you know, fighting Marineland and fighting the other side of that, which is the profit-driven forces that um, want these animals to be captive and used as um, tools for gaining money. And, you know, seeing a, another human being hurt, so hurt by that, um, just really inspired me to try to get that story out there. Um, was this film originally for, like, a, a school project or assignment, or was this totally on your own time outside of school? Yeah, you so... You wanted to like, <laughs> make this message and this story known. We... Yeah, we always try to take our um, school projects like a step further. My four friends, um, or sorry, three friends and I, we formed a little production company and we worked together to make, um, we've been making a lot of short documentaries now, um, and we try to touch important issues. But originally this project started as a, um, an assignment. It was a short character profile. The assignment was to basically pick someone interesting and do a short five-minute film about them and what makes them interesting, you know, like your basic film school assignment. And again, like I said, as soon as we sat down with him, we knew we had to forget about school. We had to take this somewhere else. There was more to tell. And um, it grew out of a school assignment, I guess. 
is the answer to that. Yeah. Um, during the process of making the film, did your own perspective change about your relationship with animals and um, what kinds of relationships we should or shouldn't be in with animals or what kind of surprised you for yourself in the process? Hmm. Um, I mean... My, per my perspective has definitely changed in the way that I see animals in the wild now that I understand um, the torment that they kind of face being in captivity. I always knew, you know, keeping animals in captivity was horrible for many, many different reasons. But when you start to see them as human because of this bond that exists between Phil and um, Smushi, you start to realize, you know, it's it's almost like the way you experience them in captivity is like if you took um, a free person and put them in a cell and you told told an alien, like, oh, look, this is what a person is like, you know. Um, and for me, like, the way it's changed how I look at animals is just that when I travel now and I get the opportunity to see animals in the wild, I'm so much more thankful for that and I'm so much more thankful for, um, you know, the the knowing that these animals are able to experience um, what so many others aren't and what Smooshi isn't and what Phil is fighting for. It's just, um, it's, it's sort of a thing that you wouldn't normally think about that I now just do because of that. Um, has Smooshi's status changed since filming the movie? Um, so what's going on with Smooshi now is basically because of the ongoing legal battles Marieland is very weary to show her in front of people, and she's actually being kept away uh, in the same barns that you see in the film for most of um, the duration that she's there. She's occasionally taken outside, but what Phil has told us right now is that any time she does, if she were to go out to do a show, um, she just lumps around the ground, she's emaciated, and she just looks for him. And there is no way for any other trainer to get her to do anything. So at this point, it's just a matter of um, keeping Smooshy in this back barn so that people can't see her condition, so that there can't be a public buzz about it, so that their lawsuits can't be overturned, and so that they don't continue to lose money. And it's not necessarily working out for them, because this year it feels like they really seem to be on their last leg. A lot of people in Canada, in Ontario and Toronto, don't go to marine land. They know, you know, they know the conditions are bad. Like, SeaWorld is horrible. But take SeaWorld and make it a quarter of the size and put it in Canada, where we have, you know, minus 20 degree weeks in winter. It's a recipe for disaster, and Canadians know that. So right now it's just mostly tourists that are going into Niagara Falls that are stopping over for a day. That's what's keeping them going. But even that, um, it's starting to die out. And really... Like, our goal with what we do is to get these places to not exist anymore, to get these animals to sanctuaries, um, to stop profiting off other living things is the main goal of everything. Do you think to get to that, um, after the public watches your film, what are kind of the best things they can do to help get to that? Do you think there should be protests outside, or they should just talk to their friends and family and make sure that they're not going? Um, what, what's kind of your vision for how we can get to ending... Um, places like this being around? Um, well, I think it's just about promoting like a general shift in attitudes. Uh, again, going back to what I said about viewing um, animals as just fellow living things, you know, treat them as you would like to be treated and really instilling those values um, in your children, right? And, you know, there's an interesting story that I was telling a couple of people out there where we were at the opening day protest and the protests are really great. Uh, don't get me wrong, everyone that's been going there for, for 30 plus years is doing an incredible job and their dedication is so heartwarming. Um, but I think it really rests with listening to our kids and listening to their instincts because we were at this um, opening day protest for Marineland just in May this year and you know you would see so many people walk by with their kids and their kids, um, they, they would kind of feel like something's off but then their parents we just yell at us, they tell us, shut up, you know, and tell their kid, don't worry, it's fine. We'll, we'll just go in, the, the whales are fine. But there was um, this one family, I believe they were visiting from India, and they walked in, and the little girl 
of the family, she just stopped and she looked at all of us and all the signs and she looked over at the the pens and the whales and um, and she started crying and she told her parents she didn't want to go in. And the whole family just came, they joined the protest and everyone there, there were probably like, I want to say a hundred people there, all rallied around this family and they became the celebrities of the event. And that girl for the rest of her life is... Um, is going to instill those values into her kids and to her friends. And um, I think that's what the main goal of the film is. Wow. That was so inspiring. Yeah, that's so powerful. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to see the film. We're Thank really you so much. So good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, glad to be here. One last question. From a filmmaker's perspective, what are your impressions of the Animal Film Festival so far, and what are your expectations? Um... Well, I've loved it, every minute of it so far. I mean, um, it's my first time here in Grass Valley. It's beautiful driving in, um, beautiful town. Everyone everyone is so dedicated to what they do. I think it's so inspiring to see all these filmmakers from around the world come to this one place, um, you know, kind of united in this one cause, and all of the sponsors of the events, you know, putting so much time and energy to to put these things on. It's amazing. We've been so well-received, you know, um, and I couldn't ask for anything better. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. No problem. That was so much fun. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Do you plan on doing more animal rights uh, films in the future? Yeah, well, what we're working on now that actually I do want to touch on, um, if we have a minute, is just right now we're trying to extend this short into a feature-length film, and we've actually received like a lot of support from different producers in Canada, and we've been... Uh, working with one producer in particular to try to get this thing off the ground. So um, if anyone is interested in these stories, like, definitely check us out. You know, we have this website, www.maydaypictures.net. Um, if you just Google The Walrus Whisper, our film is the first one that comes up. Um, and just, you know, just keep an eye on things because we're really trying to get this longer film off the ground because I think our short really captured... Um, his story very well, but it was very much based around a sit-down interview and footage that he had. Um, but right now I'm really trying to show the experience that he has, you know, dealing with this as a human and as he goes about his day-to-day -day life. And I'm trying to capture um, that that uh, reunion. The ultimate goal is to capture that reunion, reunion and then to put this whole film together, this hour-long film that will be his whole story from start to finish. And then hopefully then we can start uh, making some changes. Just one more, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, is, are, is your film like reigniting um, interest in this story? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not just in Toronto, but even beyond. I mean, he was just on the Joe Rogan show in Los Angeles. And just from, from that show, we got, I believe... 15,000 more American views on that on that video, uh, which is insane because it's like it's this little story from Canada, but it has such a connection to everyone around the world. Um, it it definitely has reignited the conversation, but it's also because it's in such a strange place legally. Because um, right now, as you'll see in the film, they're trying to pass this bill, Bill S. 203, and it's been stalling for the past year. Um, and these issues have become really contentious in Canada. There's Vancouver Aquarium, which just banned um, having walruses breeding walrus, or not walruses, sorry, having whales um, and breeding whales. And right now, Marineland is the last park that actually keeps marine mammals. So it's it's kind of a hot topic right now in um, in Canadian politics. And I definitely think the film is helping, you know, get like popular attention around that.